everyone, it's Nate here, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the classic Beatles tune, Blackbird, from their 1968 release that's self-titled, or, you know, a lot of people call it the White Album as well. And Paul McCartney recorded this one by himself on his Martin D-28, his voice, and his foot. Those are the only things you hear in the recording, although a lot of people think it's a metronome going in the background just because of the sound of it, but it's a little inconsistent, so I'm going with foot. What do you think? This song is deceptively easy sounding, and I remember hearing this in guitar stores all the time growing up saying, oh, I don't even need to bother to learn that, it's so easy. But once you actually dig into it and try to play it like Paul McCartney played it, it's a lot more challenging than it appears. And a part of the reason for that, it was, it was influenced by uh, Bach, Beret, and E minor for lute. <laughs> So it's a definitely classical feeling on some spots. I'll show you those parts that I think are really classically influenced when we get there. But Paul McCartney said, or at least the legend goes, that he learned this fingerstyle technique in this song from the folk singer Donovan. So let's get into this, and I'm just going to let you know from the top, I really don't think about shapes or what, even what chords I'm playing on this. I just think about where my fingers go and patterns and things like that. So keep that in mind as we go through this. Okay, the biggest part that gave me trouble learning this song was a finger flick, because I normally don't strum with my index finger, but there's a lot of this going on in this song, stuff like this. And that's that's the first phrase, how the first phrase starts off. So you're gonna grab this G note with your third finger and then play that in the B string, open B string with your middle finger. And then you flick the open G and B strings with your index finger. And if you have the low E string in there too, that's fine. But one thing you're gonna wanna really work on as you get the song down is the ability to flick with your index finger and be really accurate with which strings you're hitting. And we'll get to that in the next phrase. It's a really good exercise for getting this type of strumming under your finger. So that's the first little bit. Second part is the open A string, and then you're gonna fret the first fret of the B string, and have the same technique going here, thumb and middle finger on the A and B strings, and then flick your index finger on the open G and B strings as you're fretting that with your first finger. So. And then you move to this shape, which is just like a G over B. So B on the second fret of the A string with your middle finger and your pinky is gonna grab the third fret of the B string. So grab those at the same time with your thumb and middle finger and then flick the B and G strings with your index finger. So. That's the first phrase and one big piece of advice I have for you as you learn this is just work on one little phrase at a time and it'll be pretty apparent when things switch. So that's the first one. Just get that down on its own. And slow down as much as you need to to make zero mistakes. All right, that's it for this first phrase and be just aware that this first bar is in three, four. You can see that on the tab. It's a little bit strange, but something to remember. So you end up here at the end of that first phrase. To get to the next phrase, which is kind of the main coordination as far as your right hand for the song, what you're gonna do is slide all the way up. And I change from my second finger to my first finger on the A string towards on the 10th fret. And then my pinky is grabbing the 12th fret. That's the main setup for this. And this next measure is just the main strumming pattern that you need to get down for this. It starts off the same way. You're gonna go thumb and middle finger on the A and B strings. But then you have a quick flick of the G and B strings down up. And what helps me a lot with this is I mute the D string with my index finger that's being fretted right here. And I'll also mute the high E string with my pinky that's being fretted up here. So those strings don't ring out. So I can hit the surrounding strings, even though I'm trying not to, trying to be really good with my aim with my index finger. And if I hit them, it doesn't matter because they're being muted, so. From there, you're gonna hit the low A string again with your thumb and then go up, down with your index finger. And that constitutes the main kind of core coordination or strumming pattern or finger style technique for this song, so. And what I would recommend to you is to just sit here with this chord shape and do this over and over again until you have it down really well and accurate. And it took me a long time to get that down just because I'm not used to strumming with this finger, but it's a really useful coordination to have. 
So get that down very slowly. And this second phrase or the second measure on this chord is just doing that strumming pattern twice. So. so let me play that first two bar phrase for you. And when you play that, you're going to play it once for the intro. And then once you start singing, you play it again. So I'll play that two times at the beginning. And one thing that really helps me here is I kind of plant the palm of my hand on the bridge of the guitar just to keep track of where I am. That really helps be more accurate, especially when you're trying to hit just two strings with your index finger there. All right, next measure is kind of where this whole Bach beret kind of feel, classical feel comes in. I'll play it for you and then I'll tell you exactly what's going on. Okay, so you have this kind of ascending bass line that's chromatic. It's really nice, very classical. So C note, third fret of the A string and your pinky is gonna grab the fifth fret of the high B string and just pluck those with your thumb and middle finger. And then the open G string. And that's kind of the pattern for the whole thing as far as uh, your right hand goes, or at least something very similar to that. So that's your first one. Then you're gonna flip your hand around or your fingers around to where your index finger has the third fret of the high E and your middle finger has the fourth fret of the A string. Give those two a pluck with your thumb and middle finger and then the open G string again. So work on this coordination just by itself. As slow as you need to to get it really perfect. And then what you're gonna do, do the same exact motion, same exact move, but you're gonna start a whole step higher. So your index finger is on the fifth fret of the A string, your pinky is on the seventh fret of the B string. Same thing, together, then the G string, and then flip your hand around, index finger on the fifth fret of the high E, and middle finger on the sixth fret of the A. So it's the same move. So once you get that coordination down, it's really easy to just move it up a whole step and do it there. So that whole move, and this is really close to where you need to be for the next little part, and we bring that strumming pattern back. So switch, Kind of bring your hand back and flop it back around to where your index finger is on the seventh fret. Pinky is on the eighth fret of the B string. And you have your same strumming pattern here. So you're muting the low E and high E strings with uh, either your thumb, like come over here and grab that, or your pinky's kind of laying over and muting that high E string. And your index finger is muting again that D string. So hit those two and do your little strumming pattern. So thumb and middle together, down, up, thumb again, up, down. And you just do that once here. After that, you have pretty much the exact same idea. Just lower your index finger by one fret to the sixth fret and play the same little strumming pattern one time. So together. And again, if you spend time doing this, Just to get that down, it'll make this a lot easier. Now we're gonna shift back to that little classical kind of flip-flop thing that we had going. This time it's first finger on the fifth fret of the A string, pinky on the seventh fret of the B string. Hit those together, open G, and flip to where your second finger is on the fourth fret of the A string and your index finger is on the third fret of the high E string. Hit those together with your thumb and middle, then the open G string. So together it's a big flip and this one's a little bit harder to hit, I think. So just spend some time really slowly getting that transition down. Even just working like this on it without so much worrying about the right hand is a really good thing to do. Next little phrase comes back to our regular strumming pattern and it's gonna be first finger on the third fret of the A string and pinky on the fifth fret of the B string. Again, keep all the other strings you don't need quiet. Thumb and middle together on those two notes. And then do your strumming pattern. So you just do that once and then you kind of collapse your pinky down one fret to the fourth fret. Do the strumming pattern again. 
And then you kind of collapse again, just slide everything down one fret, first finger, second fret of the A, fourth finger, third fret of the B. After that, you kind of just, I let go of this and release it because you have an open A string and I'll grab the second fret of the B string with my middle finger to kind of give my pinky a break and do the same strumming pattern again once. And then things change a little bit here for your left hand or your fretting hand, but you change a little bit too for your uh, strumming hand. The only thing that changes is the bass note you're playing. So put your first finger on the first fret of the B, and then you can hit your D string open. So those two notes together. And then your strumming pattern. So let me go through that whole kind of descending thing here. It's a little bit confusing at first, but try to separate the left from the right hands at first, just so you can work on them individually, then put them together. So it'd be something like this. To wrap this phrase up, just make kind of a partial G chord, low G note here on the third fret of the E string, and then the open B string, and then just do your strumming pattern again. Just once. So the whole thing again, top to bottom. After that, you have a little tag to kind of finish off this section of the song. So put your index finger back on the C note, third fret of the A string, and Pinky's gonna grab the fifth fret of the B string, and just plug those two notes together, thumb and middle finger, then open G, and collapse down to where your index finger is on the second fret of the A. And pinky's on the third fret, together, then your open G, then open A, Second finger, second fret of the B, then do your strumming pattern. Then have your next little chord, same exact thing as the other one. Open D, first fret of the B string and strumming pattern. And then back to the G chord, little partial G. So that's the main part of the song. You do that multiple times throughout the song. There's only one other part that you need to know. It's kind of like a connector in between repeats of the main part that we just went over. Let me show you what that is. Start here with your index finger on the eighth fret, pinky on the 10th fret, and you're gonna pluck those two at the same time, and then the open G string. From there, slide it down to where your first finger is on the seventh fret, pinky's on the eighth fret. Do the same thing, pluck, then the G string. Slide back to where your index finger is on the fifth fret, pinky is on the sixth fret, then G string. Then slide back to where your index finger is on the third fret and your pinky's on the fifth fret and the same thing. So that whole little phrase up to that point. And I think about this just in two different shapes. One where you have a fret in between your pinky and your index finger, then one where you don't have a fret between your pinky and index finger. And just work on getting that down first. And then worry about the right hand. From there we go back to our little strummy part. So index finger, first fret of the A, fourth finger, third fret of the B. So hit those two together and do your little strumming pattern just once. Then move up two frets, same exact shape. Index finger, third fret of the A, pinky fifth fret of the G. And that's the first phrase of this little connector. There's two phrases, here's the first one all together. The second phrase starts out the exact same way with a little descending thing. So get that down. And one thing you're gonna be aware of, I just caught myself from doing this in a, a take we just did recently. I did this. You hear that squeaking every time that I move down? If you just take up the pressure, let off the pressure a little bit on the strings. You don't have to take your finger completely off. Just let off on the pressure and it'll take that squeak out for you. From there, the next and last little bit of this second phrase starts off the same way as the last one did. With your index finger on the first fret, that B flat of the A string, and your pinky on the third fret of the B. 
hook them together and have your little strumming pattern. Then switch to an A7 chord. So those two little strumming bits together. And I don't always hit this note I'm fretting with my index finger. I tend to hit just the G and B strings, but it's good to hit that one just in case. And this last chord moves to some kind of D. So you hit the open D with your thumb and then the B string first fret with your middle finger. And then you have your little strumming pattern just once to finish this up. And on the recording, I definitely hear an F in the top of this. And I don't know if that's an accident or if it's intentional, but that's what I hear. So you can either do a D7 or just this and leave the high E string completely out. Or have that F in there on top by making a little bar. Anyway, you do that just once for your pattern. And then that takes you back around into the main part of the song again. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below what finger style songs you want to learn. I'll see you later.